Nice. You ran out here. You ran out. Now, very few people run out here. I love the urgency. I'm so excited to get here. Oh, we're excited <laughs> to have you. I'm sorry to have you. Good to see you, man. Yeah. Well, you know, you know I'm a big fan. I actually wrote you after I see Foxcatcher. You know, I actually got home and immediately wrote you. Did that I, freak you out? Did I seem like a stalker? Not at all. Really? Yeah, because that was one of the most beautiful portraits of brotherly love I've ever seen. Thank you. Um, Thank incredible you. performance. Thank you. And you also do get to be the Hulk at the same time. Is that a nice balance for you? It's amazing. I, I'm, I can't believe they let me do it. <laughs> <laughs> do people come up? Do they like yell, "Hey, Hulk out"? Do they try to make you angry? <laughs> Um, they, all I ever hear is, I'm not making you angry, man. Really? Um, I walk down the street and people be like, Yo, Hulk! And my son's like, Put your hood up. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because of your hair. Yeah, seriously, get a haircut, yeah. you, <laughs> you are a little, you are a little, you're very you're politically involved. You, you're fighting for clean water, fighting the fracking people, uh, trying to keep the. <laughs> <laughs> who thought of fracking? Uh, people who need oil. They're all Americans. <laughs> yeah, yes, that's right. Um, You're right. Now, uh, do, you, uh, do you feel the burn? Are you a Bernie Sanders fan? I'm burning up, man. Are you really? Yeah. But that's, that's, but that's not your first love. Like, you tried to get Elizabeth Warren to run, right? I did. I, I, I begged Elizabeth Warren to run. Did you physically, run. like, go and beg her? I, I did a, a, a little video uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a play in a, outside in a park yeah. with a bunch of kids behind me mm -hmm. saying, Elizabeth, we need you. They need you. Yeah? She watches Liz the show. Run. I'm pretty sure she watches this show. Liz, there's, there's hold still on, Hold on, hold on one second. Hold on, one second. There you go. <laughs> go. Liz, there's still time. There is still time. Anybody can Liz jump and in. Sanders. Let's talk about a subject that I know that some people might be uncomfortable about, but you're actually, you've, you've done the movie and, and you, you know about the subject. And yeah. that is, why do the Hulk's pants stay on? <laughs> <laughs> if everything else comes out. <laughs> why, why is that? Uh, they're stretchy pants. The stretchy pants. Oh, right, that's <laughs> okay. Um, you have a new film. It's called Spotlight. That's right. And uh, it's a it's a brilliant film on a heartbreaking subject. Um, it's about uh, an investigation by the Boston Globe in uh, 2000. Yes. In 2000, of the sexual abuse crisis within the Catholic Church, specifically in the diocese around Boston. That's right. Who do you play? I play uh, Mike Rosendis, who uh, was on the Spotlight team. And who is just such a fantastic um, investigative journalist? Like, if you want to know the definition of investigative journalist, he he would be the perfect uh, example. How did this story come to the Boston Globe? How did these, why were these the first guys to break this story on a, on, a, on a wide scale? Um, well, uh, Eileen McNamara, who, who actually was writing an opinion piece. Um, kind of called out the fact that there's no way there could have been that kind of molestation in Boston without Cardinal Law knowing about it. Because uh, the church's and, response was these were isolated incidences that had yes, been reported. bad apples. Exactly, bad apples. And then y'all investigated further, or rather the characters you played investigated further. Yes, and what they came to find was that they thought they were sitting on a huge story with 13 priests uh, molesting boys, raping boys in the uh, Catholic Archdiocese of Boston. Uh, but what it really was was more like 90 to 100 priests. Mm -hmm. And uh, these priests were being sent, uh, taken off um, out of the uh, uh, service for a, a, a couple months, put into a kind of a rehab, and then sen sent back to places where there was children. That was one of the greatest scandals as revealed as the story played out over the next 10 years that priests had been essentially reassigned, just put someplace else where their, their crimes had not been exposed or not been complained about, and then other people or other children were put at risk. Yes. How long did it take for the story? How long was the actual investigation before the story actually was published? Um... Because um, I imagine these guys wanted to get it dead they wanted, rights before yes. they published. So this is the, the beauty of this kind of journalism. They had a lot of time and resources to follow the story out to its final end. If they had gone with the 13 priests, they never would have brought it all the way up to the Vatican, which is where the story led. There was a huge... It, it's, it's the priests, yes, and the, and the scandal, yes, but there was a huge cover-up as well. And so what these, why, why journalism is so important and why it's important to fund it 
and to have long lead journalist stories mm -hmm. is that they can trace down the facts and the truth to a point where it's it's just inconceivable that can be anything else than what they come upon. This movie is, among other things, uh, something of a celebration or a valentine to investigative journalism. Yes. It's a, it's a very important time for investigative journalism. And our, our papers are, are dying. And this kind of investigative journalism is, is sort of falling to the, to the wayside. And we're losing a lot because this is where, this is where we fight tyranny. What you see in the movie are these giant institutions, the Boston Globe and the Catholic Church. They're very cozied up to one another. And so they're afraid to confront this horrible crime that's going on. Now, the character you play is a Catholic, as are the other investigative journalists who are actually working on uh, the story. Were you raised a Catholic? I was raised Catholic. And a as was I, and I still go to the church. And um, the heartbreaking thing to me about this story, the revelation, is that it's not that I... Uh, I'm no longer a member of the church. I am a member of the church, but that for so many people out there, it actually sullied the place that would have been a solace for the kind of heartbreak or the psychic damage created by the immediate abuse of the priests or the people who now, when they go into a church, feel guilty for going into a Catholic church that it could allow this to happen because 17,500 children were abused in the United States, and those are the numbers from the Catholic church itself. It is a terrible story for the church, but the only possible way for the church to heal is for the truth to be known. Um, did you talk to any of the people who worked on this and what it did to their faith to work on the story? All of them were Catholics. They, they all had a relationship to the church, and, and it was Boston. Uh, the church is a big part of, of, of that culture. Um, my character wanted to go back to the church. He always sort of imagined going back to the church. Well, I do, I do have a follow-up question. Do you enjoy playing the Hulk? I love the pants. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mark Ruffalo, ladies and gentlemen.